Hi, the purpose of this video is going to be to show you how to draw a basic plane mirror diagram. Um, there are a few other mirror diagram videos I'm going to make involving things like concave, convex, converging, diverging mirrors. Uh, I might do some stuff with lenses also, but this one is all about just plane mirrors. The big deal with these mirror diagrams is that you're going to start with this, which is supposed to represent the mirror. Uh, we're just seeing the edge of it. The actual mirrored surface would be over here. So we're just seeing the edge of it. We have our object labeled as O, and we have our observer. I'm trying to draw it as some sort of a nice eyeball for you. In these diagrams, we have to draw the image, and then we draw our ray diagrams. Um, the particular rule for a plane mirror is that you're always going to produce a virtual image that is erect and the same size as the original object. The only thing that happens is it's going to be thrown over here, flipped around. So in my object, I tried to draw something like an apple for you showing the stem this way. I'm going to have to make sure that I draw the stem facing the other way. That's how I'm showing that it's a reflection. So I very quickly measure this and I get that the object is about 16 centimeters in front of the mirror. That means that my image is going to appear 16 centimeters behind. So I'm going to kind of just measure this off a little bit here. And I'm going to put my image kind of a little bit lopsided looking. Usually when I'm marking these that my students are doing, I don't care if it's exactly perfect because I'm just looking for the general idea that they tried to make their image the same size, shape, flipped around as their object, and then I'm going to be happy about it. Also notice that when I drew my image, because it's a virtual image, I drew it as a dotted line. Stuff that appears behind the mirror isn't actually there, so all that stuff has to be dotted. And I was also careful to label it I for image. Now I'm going to start drawing the rays, and what I usually want to do is try to choose a point on the image, or object if you want to think of it that way, that is quite distinct, quite obviously special, something that uh, we could look at. So I'm going to choose the tip of the stem near the top. Later on I'll draw a second ray diagram, because most of the time when you're drawing a ray diagram, the rule is you draw two separate rays. That way you get an idea of how things are converging on the observer's eye, uh, showing them that sense of depth of something looking like it's behind the mirror. So I'm going to first draw a ray that comes along from my eye towards that part of the image. And when I get behind the mirror, I have to draw my ray as a dotted line. Now I'm going to show that the direction that ray is traveling is towards my eye. And it gives the appearance as though a ray of light has traveled in a straight line right to my eye from that image. But I know that there's truly nothing back there and that really the light came from the same spot on the object. By drawing this part of the ray first though, I now know the point on the mirror where the ray of light has to hit to be able to bounce off. A common error that I see students make is they try to draw a ray straight across like this from the object to the image and then it bounces up. You have to remember if a ray actually went from the object straight across, hit the mirror perpendicular to its surface, kind of like along the normal line, it would bounce straight back the way it came. It wouldn't be going up to the person's eye. So what instead I'm looking at is how this ray came from the object up to that point on the mirror. And I draw my arrow indicating that the ray of light truly travels up this way, bounces off the mirror, and gets to my eyeball so I can see it. This on its own would be considered our first ray. Okay, so at this point, I'm, I'm basically done you know, a good part of the job. I put my image, I labeled it and everything like that. But I've only drawn one ray so far. The requirement that most people will have is that you draw two rays for your diagrams. So the other spot that I'm going to choose is kind of somewhere down here on the bottom of my image. So again, I'm trying to show how that ray of light looks like it's getting to my eyeball. And as soon as I get behind the mirror, I'm drawing that virtual ray as a dotted line. I'm indicating that that ray of light is really traveling up to my eye, and that that ray of light had to originate on the object 
at the same point as it looks like it came from on the image. So I'm going to go from here on my object, going up to the mirror, where I know the ray of light must have hit in order to bounce off. These are solid rays because they are real rays of light that are actually traveling. Draw an arrow indicating that that's the direction it was traveling. The nice thing on this diagram now is you get sort of that idea of why we have perspective that um, the image looks like it's behind because even for the ray of light coming off of the object or off of the image, we can see that the rays of light are converging on the observer's eye. It's what gives that sense of depth uh, to the image being behind the plane mirror like that. So at this point, I would say that my plane mirror diagram is done. I've got the image that I drew in first as a dotted line, my virtual, erect, same-sized image. Then I drew two separate ray diagrams showing how rays of light were truly traveling from the object to hit the mirror to bounce up to the observer's eye in order to give me that perception of as though the light had come from behind the mirror and producing that image for me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.